Good morning. I rejoice with those who said, let us go to the house of the Lord. We have many challenges and trials. Rejoicing when we're gathering together during a pandemic can be a bit of a challenge. And yet we calm our hearts because we know we have a gracious God that is with us and watching us. And it's not that we aren't affected. We are affected. We know that. We've had it within our own family, both our son and daughter-in-law here, uh, few weeks back, tested positive for the COVID. They quarantined. They are all negative now. We got word at the end of this week, our daughter in Wyoming tested positive. She had a pretty tough week, but now already today she's cleared by the CDC guidelines and is fine. And when mom talked to her last night, she was feeling much better. So the COVID is real. We know that. It affects us in different ways. And yet to take this opportunity to gather and worship and praise, to seek God's guidance, his, his blessing, his encouragement is always our goal. We pray for those that can't be here, aren't able to be here for the various reasons. And we know that God is watching over them and keeping them safe. We miss them. Uh, we, we miss that opportunity. But we also are filled with joy today. We can be filled with joy because our God is with us and blessing us with his presence and his promises. We're in the second Sunday of Advent, so we'll be lighting two of the Advent candles this morning. Again, last week as we began the season of Advent in the new church year, we lit the first candle, which was highlighted as the prophecy candle, also known as the hope candle. We think about prophecy, you know, promises. There's hope. The second candle today is our focus. It's referred to sometimes as the Bethlehem candle. Reminding ourselves of that promise that God gave to the people as a sign to know the promised Messiah, that he would born, be born in the town of Bethlehem, the city of David, because he was of the line of King David, Bethlehem. We think about that calming, beautiful song, right? Away in a manger. The beauty, the time on that Christmas when Jesus was born in that small town of Bethlehem, what peace came over the people at that time. So the second candle is also referred to as the peace candle. Christ came to bring us peace. Peace between us and a just and holy God. Peace by coming and being our Messiah and bringing that faith. So today again, we light both the first and the second Advent candle We pray. Gracious God, as we call on you, as we prepare for this worship service, we thank you for your love. We thank you for the peace you offer to us again today as we gather and are encouraged and strengthened by your word. May you be with us and bless us, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. See the worship theme highlighting today, it is God that provides. He provides the message, He provides those messengers that we are given the means to prepare us. To prepare us for what's coming. We know what's coming, it's the end. Whether it be the end of our own lives, our own race here on this earth, or the end of the world. Whichever comes first, we don't know. And it's that not knowing sometimes, and it's that length of waiting sometimes that can make things a challenge. We gather here to encourage each other, spur one another on towards love and good deeds to encourage each other, and that's the goal of our worship again today. God provides the means to get us ready. May our hearts be focused on this truth again as we join in worship and praise. We'll begin with the opening as we ask God's guidance and blessings on page 2 in your service folder. Our gracious God gives us a unique, a special promise that when we call on Him, He's with us. We seek His blessing, His presence with us again today. So let's begin this worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father, asking Him, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us 
forgiveness. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed You in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve Your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins. And trusting in my Savior Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us, and He's given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In that peace of forgiveness, let us praise our Lord. Today we join together in our opening hymn, Comfort, Comfort, All My People. The Lord be with you. We pray. Stir up our hearts, O Lord, to prepare the way for your only Son. By His coming, give us strength in our conflicts and shed light on our path through the darkness of this world. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Turn our attention now to the scripture readings for the second Sunday of Advent, season of Advent, that time of preparation. How do we prepare? Well, with the call of alertness, readiness. He's coming. Right? He's coming. That term itself can heighten people to a sense of anxiety, of fear. And yet, how wonderful that God inspires the prophet Isaiah to remind everyone his love. Comfort is the theme. Comfort. Right? He's coming. He's sending the messengers. He's sending the word to prepare our hearts but not to put us in a state of terror, to give us comfort. Isaiah 40, verses 1 to 11. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call out to her. Her warfare really is over. Her guilt is fully paid for. Yes, She has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice is calling out, In the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord. In the wasteland, make a level highway for our God. Every valley will be raised up, and every mountain and hill will be made low. The rugged ground will become level, and the rough places will become a plain. Then the glory of the Lord will be revealed, and all flesh together will see it. Yes, the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice was saying, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry out? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like a wildflower in the countryside. Grass withers, flowers fade when the breath of the Lord blows on them. Yes, the people are grass. Grass withers, flowers fade, but the word of our God endures forever. Get up on a high mountain. O Zion, you herald of good news, 
Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, you herald of good news. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. Look, God the Lord will come with strength, and His arm is ruling for Him. Look, His reward is with Him. The result of His work is in front of Him. Like a shepherd, He will care for His flock. With His arm, He will gather the lambs. He will lift them up on His lap. He will gently lead the nursing mothers. Here ends our Old Testament lesson. Continue now with our Psalm of the Day, Psalm 85. I will hear what the Lord proclaims, peace to His people. We join in singing this psalm in unison this morning. I will hear what the Lord proclaims, peace to His people. You showed favor to your land, O Lord. You restored the fortunes of Jacob. You forgave the iniquity of your people and covered all their sins. Show us your unfailing love, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. I will hear what the Lord proclaims, peace to His people. I will listen to what God the Lord will say. He promises peace to His people, His saints. Surely His salvation is near those who fear Him, that His glory may dwell in our land. Love and faithfulness meet together. Righteousness and peace kiss each other. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. I will hear what the Lord proclaims Peace to His people. Our second reading today is the epistle lesson taken from Peter's second letter. We read in the third chapter, verses 8 to 14. This is our sermon text for today. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. For the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow to do what He promised, as some consider slowness. Instead, He is patient for your sakes, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. The day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day, the heavens will pass away with a roar. The elements will be dissolved as they burn with great heat, and the earth and what was done on it will be burned up. Therefore, Since all these things will be destroyed, what kind of people ought you to be living in holiness and godliness as you look forward to and hasten the coming of the day of God? That day will cause the heavens to be set on fire and destroyed and the elements to melt as they burn with great heat. But according to His promise, we look forward to new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, dear friends, as you look forward to these things, Make every effort to be found in peace, spotless and blameless in His sight. Here ends the epistle lesson. A verse of the day, hallelujah, prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight paths for Him. All mankind will see God's salvation. Alleluia. 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 Invite those that are able to please stand for our gospel reading today. 
Dear friends, we stand in respect to the Holy Gospel our Lord gives us to the Gospel writer Mark. Today we're reading the first chapter, the first eight verses. Glory be to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. This is how it is written in the prophet Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare the way for you. A voice of one calling out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John appeared, baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him. They were baptized by him in the Jordan River as they confessed their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He preached, One more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the strap of his sandals. I baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Here ends the Gospel reading. Praise be to you, O Christ. We continue now with confessing our faith today with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through Him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day He rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and His kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the Giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and a life of the world to come. Amen. Congregation may be seated. Here's a song from Isaiah 40 and Mark 1 and 2 Peter 3. Guide us to heaven. God is our shepherd, caring for all our needs. He guides us gently in all the life you see. Prepare for each day as the gospel shows, getting love and comfort through his word. Our brother John sent to prepare the way. Jesus our Savior came to us on that day. Messiah had come to teach and save. May we give thanks to God and pray. Slowly our Lord gives time to turn to Him, to learn of His way, and guard against all sin. May we live knowing that the end is near. Let's do God's work while we're here. God is our shepherd, caring for all our needs. He guides us gently in 
all the life you see Prepare for each day As the gospel shows Giving love and comfort through His word Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior Jesus Christ, dear friends. As I mentioned, the word of our Lord upon which we want to base our meditation today is taken from that epistle lesson for this second Sunday of Advent. Again, reading from 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 8 to 14. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. For the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years are like one day. The Lord is not slow to do what He promised, as some consider slowness. Instead, He is patient for your sake, not wanting anyone to perish, but all to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. On that day the heavens will pass away with a roar. The elements will be dissolved as they burn with great heat, and the earth and what was done on it will be burned up. Therefore, since all these things will be destroyed, what kind of people ought you to be? Living in holiness and godliness, as you look forward to and hasten the coming of the day of God. That day will cause the heavens to be set on fire and destroyed, and the elements to melt as they burn with great heat. But according to His promise, we look forward to new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, dear friends, as you look forward to these things, make every effort to be found in peace, spotless, and blameless in His sight. This is the word of our Lord, dear friends. You see this theme there, the focus, right there in the middle of that epistle lesson today is that question that Peter puts before us. Therefore, since all these things are going to be destroyed, what kind of people ought you to be? It's a fair question, right? What kind of people ought we to be? Now, of course, content and the purpose of asking that question is everything. What kind of people ought we to be? Well, I'm the person God made me, right? I am who I am. Just think about that for a minute. You are? Who you are? Who are you? That, that's our question that we want to just focus and meditate on. Today. And it's a valid question. It's an important question. What kind of people are you? Well, if we go back to Wednesday night, go back to that reminder that we have, that encouragement again, not, not created and developed by me, something that I've heard, I've taken, I've shared, and I continue to share. Right? When people ask, how are you doing today? Instead of just saying good, you can say, I'm great. I'm a redeemed child of God, bought by the blood of Jesus. Someone shared with me that uh, at the end of this week, they went into work. They tried that out. Thursday morning, and went into the office. So she said, how are you doing? And he said it. She said, I like that. It catches on, right? Who, who are we? What kind of people? We're redeemed children of God. Bought by the blood of Jesus. That's who we are. But now the follow-up question. Dear friends, is that how we live every day? I know what my answer is. Sadly, no. Sadly, no, there are times that I'm not behaving that way. We know how that is. There's a reason why God establishes this relationship with us. Remember when the disciples asked and said, Hey, teach us how to pray. And guess what? 
Jesus said, pray our Father, which means we're His children, and He's our Father in heaven. He wants us to understand that relationship. So I kind of came over here, so I'm seeing some kids. This is a kid corner over here. We've got kids hanging out here today. I just want you to think for a moment, those times as you get a little bit older, mom and dad start to maybe trust you at home alone. They'll say, we're going to be back in a little bit. How do you behave when they're gone? And is someone in charge of looking out the window and watching, and all of a sudden, mom and dad are coming, and all of a sudden we've got to behave again, right? I, I think that's a typical child behavior at times. We're free. We can do whatever we want. Well, not really. And all of a sudden we start looking over the shoulder when we maybe are doing something we know we shouldn't. That, you know, there's that one drawer that has the really, really sharp knives in it, and we've been instructed, you don't touch those knives. They're too sharp. You have to stick with the butter knife, and yet you're trying to peel that apple, and it just isn't going so well. And ah, mom and dad aren't around. They won't mind. I'll be careful. And we go in there. And just as we go to touch that drawer and open it, and we just have our hand on the knife, the garage door opens, and there's dad standing there going, what are you doing? In a way, this is what Peter is talking to us about. The Lord's coming again. Are we living each day as if He's right there with us? Or are we like, ah, oh, He'll come. He's so slow in getting here. He's taking forever. It's not even going to happen. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And Peter addresses that. Know the difference between slow and patient? I do. I'm an expert at that. I've learned. I, I've, I learned it as a child, and I know I've carried it over, and it's one of those things that sometimes can frustrate my wonderful wife. Because I can do things slow. So slow, she says, just let me do it. Right? And I learned that as a kid. My dad would give me a task. No, I don't want to do it, but oh, he does not like it when I say no. So I'll just go real slow. And then he'll get impatient. My dad was king of impatience. Just grab it and do it himself. And I was off the hook. Right? That, that's, that's being slow. And see, sometimes people hear this message and say, the Lord's coming again. And some say, are you kidding me? It's been over 2,000 years. He's not coming. He's so slow. It's not slow. It's not slow. He's patient. Right? He's patient. I wasn't patient as a parent. I'm patient as a grandparent. I just take over and do the task for my kid. Now I just sit back and watch when those grandkids are doing a project and I'm patient with them. Because it's just fun watching them do that stuff. It's, as, as we grow older, we, get to, we start to figure some of this stuff out, right? And, and this is why God blesses us today with these words and this encouragement for all of us. What kind of people ought we to be? We ought to be the people that understand we have a loving God who isn't slow, but is so patient. He's so patient because you know what? He doesn't want anyone to be destroyed in that final judgment. He doesn't want any souls going down and joining Satan in hell. He doesn't. Now, that is the ultimate judgment for the unbeliever. For those that reject the gift of the Holy Spirit, that reject that ability to say, Jesus is my Savior... That's real. But see, God's patient because He's seen opportunities in time for us who are His children to share this truth. So He's patient. He's not slow. He's patient because He loves us. And He's wanting us, right? He's wanting us not to abuse that patience, but to see this as opportunities 
to let our light of faith shine, to see these opportunities, to let the blessings that God has showered down upon us and given us, that's who we are, to be evident in our life. And Paul sums it, or sorry, Peter sums it up very beautifully here. Therefore, dear friends, as you look forward to these things, make every effort to be found in peace, spotless, and blameless. And that is possible. How can you and I be at peace? How can we be spotless and blameless? By trusting every day in that statement. How are you? I'm a redeemed child of God. Bought by the blood of Jesus. See, that blood of Jesus is what makes us spotless. It's what makes us holy. And when we take that and clothe ourselves in that, oh, the peace, the peace we have. Because Satan can't come at us and say, I know what you did. I remember what you did. God's going to get at you. We can say, get out of here, Satan. Get behind me. I'm at peace. Because I'm clothed in the holy righteousness that Jesus earned for me. And I'm at peace. And I can live every day that way. Not celebrating my immorality. Not, not celebrating, so I can do whatever I want. No. Living in that, that peace, blameless, spotless, doing every day the opportunities to show what it means to be a redeemed child of God. That God's Word matters in our life. That we're taking the time again today to gather together and worship here in person or via the technology. And letting God's Word prepare us to remind us this day is coming. The day is coming. He is returning. Are we living that way? Or have we forgotten about it? I don't know about you, but I forget. Driving to the store, go get something. I know she told me what she needed. I sit in the vehicle outside the grocery store saying, what was it? What was it? Oh, good, there's the list. There's the note, because I can't remember. But I got a note. I got a to-do list. Right? Sometimes we have to refer back to those to-do lists. Well, in a sense, friends, that's exactly what God's Word is for us here again today. It's the to-do to list. Have, have we forgotten at times that we are redeemed children of God, bought by the blood of Jesus? Has our actions, our attitude, how we present it and behave maybe express that and that we've forgotten? Yeah. I know it has. I know it has for me. And yet God in anger doesn't judge me and condemn me. But as that loving Father in heaven, He reaches out again to me today and says, here, here's this word. Here's this reminder note. Here's, here's this to-do list. How about if we give this a try? Let's look forward to this day. Let's look forward to the fact Christ is coming again. And our trust in Him will not be disappointed. Our, our, our message is saying, let's be ready, let's be prepared. And others rolling their eyes, oh, you're one of those. We don't need to be embarrassed about that. Yeah, I am one of those. I am one of those that believes in this incredible promise from God that He's coming again, that He is real, that all this is real. It's not just some made-up, gullible fantasy for foolish, weak people. No, this is the truth and the power of God's Word that says He loves me. He loves this world. He's given the plan of salvation through that cross. And we need to live our lives every day as people that trust that promise and reflect that. To let that peace rule in our hearts. To realize and understand memorizing those Ten Commandments. Remember when we had to do that? To keep reviewing those is important. It's that to-do list. And say, oh yeah, that's how I'm supposed to be. And finding great confidence in knowing every day because of Jesus, God says, I've done that. I've fulfilled that. I am righteous and holy. So now, I want to be the type of person 
that strives to do that myself every day. Not to earn heaven, it's already mine. But to do that in such a way that I'm not challenging or abusing God's patience, but that instead I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to this promise because this is going to happen. And what's going to happen from an earthly standpoint, from a human standpoint, is real. It's scary. It's kind of destructive. But do we hear what God says through his prophet? Comfort. Comfort. Comfort, my people. He cares about us. He loves us. He wants us to be ready. He doesn't want us to lose sight of this. So again, he prepares our hearts today through his word. He gives us the means so that you and I understand and know this is going to happen. And it hasn't happened yet, not because God's forgotten, not because He's so slow, but because He's patient. He's patient with us because His love is perfect. That's the love He gives to us. That we can enjoy every day that peace. So, dear friends, look forward to these things and make every effort to be found in peace, spotless, and blameless in His sight. That's the kind of people we ought to be. May God bless us and guide us and strengthen us that indeed those are the kind of people we are. To God be the glory. Amen. Lord. So, we'll continue now with the prayer of the church. Eternal Father, throughout the centuries you repeated and affirmed your promise to send the offspring of the woman to crush the serpent's head. Through your prophets of old, you continually directed the people of the eyes of your people to the advent of their Savior. We praise you, O Lord, for keeping your promise and sending your Son to destroy the works of the devil. As we prepare our hearts for that coming again, and as we prepare to celebrate the birth of our King, may you use your mighty word to shatter our pride and to rouse us from spiritual slumber and apathy. May you move us to take to heart the words of John, Repent! For the kingdom of heaven is near. You sent your Son to redeem us from sin. Let this good news be our joy and our strength. Use it to cheer the lonely, encourage the fearful, and give hope to the despairing. In these days before Christmas, spare us from the stress of deadlines and the frenzy of the commercialism that is all around us. Instead, keep our hearts focused on the truth. Fill our hearts with that peace. Fill our lives with the message of your love, your peace, and the music of your grace. Direct our eyes not only to the manger, but also to the skies, where we will see your Son coming again, not as that lowly child, but as the King of kings and Lord of lords. May you lift up our hearts in joyful anticipation of that day. Help us to recognize the beauty and the power of your patience and your love. Hear us, Lord, as we take a moment to bring you our own personal, private petitions. Come quickly, Lord Jesus, in your grace, in your power, and in your glory. Come, Lord Jesus, and hear that prayer that you've taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
continue now with our liturgy on page 13 of the service folder as we prepare for the Lord's Supper. The Lord be with you. Also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, whose way John the Baptist prepared when he called people to repentance and pointed to Jesus as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song. Servant, depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared before the face of all people. A lie to light in the Gentiles and the glory of your people Israel. We give thanks to the Lord for He is good. His mercy endures forever. We give thanks, Almighty God, that You have refreshed us with this Holy Supper. We pray that through it You will strengthen our faith in You and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Receive with believing hearts that blessing from our God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen, Amen, Amen. We close with that closing hymn, hymn 329. Lord, dismiss us with your blessing.